गुड मॉर्निंग क्लास लास्ट टाइम आई टू अ क्लास ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन एंड हिस्ट्री ऑफ साइकेट्री टूडे वी आर टेकिंग अ क्लास ऑन एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ अ साइकेट्रिक पेशेंट एज यू हैव स्टडीड इन मेडिसिन वी शुड फर्स्ट आक्स द नेम ऑफ द पेशेंट सपोज एक्स वाई जेड देन वी नीड टू नो द एज द सेक्स the religious ethnicity of the patient along with the occupation because of the occupational hazard of the patient and take a proper address of the patient so that we can go for follow up if the patient doesn't turn up in the hospital opd we also need to jot down the date of admission of the patient along with that the date of examination of the patient the day when you are examining the patient after this data we go back to taking chief complaints and history of prison illness hopi after that we do some general general vital examination like pulse rate bp respiratory rate and temperature along with weight and height of the patient then you know the six things pallor icterus clubbing all these things are you have studied in medicine today we will come to the specificity of examination in a psychiatric patients we should take all this history along with that we need to take a mental state examination of a patient this is what differentiates the history taking of a normal patient and a psychiatric patient as i have told you in the opening class in the orientation class that the examination of a patient starts from the second he enters into the examination room why did i say that you'll come to this here so in this mental state examination first of all we are we see we note down the appearance and behavior of the patient the appearance of the patient we should write whether the patient was well groomed or ill groomed whichever the patient is grooming and whether the patient is disabled or not properly dressed properly dressed or not behavior whether the patient is violent submissive or normal or cordial this is known as appearance and behavior the other things the next thing which we come is whether patient is conscious or not consciousness here we should say whether patient is conscious 
at the time of examination of the patient or he was unconscious or semi-conscious, whether the patient was brought in a wheelchair or he had come by himself or he was brought by other relatives or the other family relatives and the caregivers. These are all the things we should get to know to come to a proper diagnosis of a psychiatric patient. So each and every minor detail is involved, involved and needed to come to a diagnosis of a patient because the psychiatric diagnosis are very intertwined among themselves. The apparition behavior then become in the consciousness we come whether the patient was alert or not responding to response and in this it will come response to question whether the patient was communicative or not whether the patient was cooperative or not this is very important Another thing what we, what we need to know around that behavior is psychomotor activity, which is known as on a short form we write PMA. The psychomotor activity Basically means whether patient, suppose I will tell you, in a depressed patient, how will the facial ex expression, how will the psychomotor activity be? The depressed patient will be sad, down, diminished, won't be so much interactive with the examiner. He will be sublime, he will be diminutive. While in a manic patient or schizophrenic patient, the patient may be hyperactive. The patient may be fighting, the patient may be arrogant, the patient might be too much overexcited. In a, a manic patient where we find poverty, we find over familiarity is one of the symptoms of manic. Over familiarity. This is found in mania. Where the patient will, at the first in time or first interaction, or first examination, the patient will be talking to you as if he has known you for a long duration of time. And this is not the first interview with the patient. He will talk with you as if that he knows you and you are, you are his, like his brother or his sister or something. This is known as over familiarity, where we also find the psychomotor activity relatively raised. Okay? In a depressed patient, it will be opposite. The patient will be subtle, he, he would not be, he won't speak on his own until spoken to, basically, and the, his actions will be total diminutive. In a schizophrenic patient, it can be both. It can be both, the patient may be agitated, or the patient might be subdued also, according to the symptoms he, has, he or she has come with. We also write rapo establishment. This is very important as a psychiatrist and as all clinicians. Because until unless you have built a rapo with the patient, the patient will never tell you his problems. If you actually, if you listen to a patient's history properly, you will understand the patient himself will tell the, the what his symptoms, his diagnosis, and what specifically he wants from your treatment. Remember, he or she might have gone to other doctors, maybe other psychiatrists, but he was not satisfied with those, their treatment, maybe. That's why they have come to you. These are which, which we call in limited time flying patients. So rapport establishment is very much necessary for that. Second, in a psychiatric patient, in a skin patient basically, they have a feeling of distrust towards everybody. 
until unless you break that barrier you don't have enter into his comfort zone you will not able to extend the proper history from the patient the rapo establishment is there grooming is there self care is there consciousness was there now will come to speech once the patient starts opening his mouth we should note down his speech sample basically we should give a speech sample and then explain what is this we should write whether the patient was the speech was patient the speech was relevant or not coherent whether you have understood what the patient has actually tried to convey to you coherent or not and we should also write the tone first we should write the rate rate tone and quantum of speech yeah this is just physical physics term but we need to write about the rate tone and quantum of the speech rate whether the patient is speaking very fast or speaking very slow how many words the patient is speaking rapid speech which we found in many patient but in depressed patient the patient the rate of the speech will be decreased it will be subdued tone in a many patient he will be or a speech patient patient will be shouting ha main ye kar lunga main wo kar lunga like that but in a depressed patient patient would be shouting patient is already sad the tone will be decreased it will be diminished it will be like that ha aman naam like this while quantum of speech quantum of speech then after speech we ask the patient about the mood in lemonas we we need to know in mood is a persistent mood which was present which was there in the patient for the last few weeks not at that moment is a persistent mood persistent but basically what we ask ki ye kuch hafte se ya mahine se aapka predominant mood kya hai whether you feel sad most of the times whether you feel happy most of the times or whether you feel euthymic means normal euthymic the word is euthymic here remember we should or we should record or we should write the mood of the patient according to the verbal team of the patient verbal team what the patient tells you ha mood monta khap thake most of the time kintu majhe majhe thik thake timba am sob shoy khushi sob shoy energy you should write the verbal team of the patient and also we should write the daniel variable daniel changes of mood the daniel the subek mood ek dopar ko a sun downing effect or sun rising effect there are other things which we should know later on the daniel changes on the mood of the patient and whether there is any liability or not what is liability you will come to know later on now mood is what the patient tells you but you do do observe you know the facial expressions are so vivid and so vast that they actually tell you how the mood of the person is so what we call that we call that effect effect is what we see 
on the facial structure of the patient. That you will get to understand after repeated examining the patient and with experience, you will understand the effect of the patient. Where we can write the patient is euthymic, which normal, elated, they are either in this euthymic level, okay. Now, in a manic patient, the patient will be elated, euphoric. When a depressed patient, the patient will be sad, psychothymic, or depressed. Understood? So, according to the mood of the patient, while in a skis patient, the effects will be masked, which we call as restricted effect. What is restricted effect? I will give you an example. Suppose the patient is talking about a happy thought. He is talking about his marriage to you, but his expression has no changes. There is no happy happy thought of the fa fa on the face, or it's a plain bland face, which we know as restricted. The effect is restricted. The emotions on the face is restricted. This is not restricted. So either we can write euphoric, euthymic, depressed, and so on and so forth. So appearance and behavior, speech, then comes mood, then comes effect. Now, the next thing we should ask, in a patient which today I will not talk in details but later on you will have the class that is thought we should know the thought process of the person here we divide into three parts, four parts, sorry. Stream of thought, form of thought, content of thought, and process, thought process. This understanding about thought is little difficult for you at this stage, but we'll come to that. We'll teach you properly how to understand what is going on in the thought of in the thinking process of a patient. That may, might make you an crazy among in, in all the groups of parties. So because you'll be understanding other people's thought. After thought, we come to perception. What is perception? We have five proper senses. The proper senses are visual, auditory, I will write that only, eyes, ears, nose, olfactory, tongue, gustatory, skin, Tactile. Now we should know in a patient of schizophrenia, 
basically or other mental mental illnesses we find basically schizophrenia we find auditory hallucination you have in what is schizophrenia i will tell you one thing rest of you have seen what in layman term you call pagal what do they do on the road if you have noticed them properly you will say the person is doing some things while con- continuously abusing somebody or if you come in front of the of the person the person will be start abusing you and start throwing things at you you might have thought why tum log you people say oh the pagal oh, he does that no you should understand because this patients are actually schizophrenic where we find or we know that there is auditory hallucination basically auditory hallucination what we call you need to know what is auditory hallucination hallucination is you should, i will tell you the difference between hallucination and illusion here there is any perception of any stimulus without any external stimuli means there is no sound still he can hear some sound basically those sounds in the schizophrenic patients the hallucinations are basically derogatory in nature the sounds which you can hear in your head the voices in my head very popular term they are very, very derogatory what they speak to ke maar bo to to ke do bo to tu ye korbi tu yo and lot of in your slang language those words as your patient hears them 24/7 all through the time even that that stops the patient from sleeping at night to so that mental turn that the patient suffers from that much mental turn the turmoil to so when you walk in front of the of that mad person he thinks that you are the one who is cursing him you are the one who is of who is throwing obscenities at him for the this long duration of time that's why he tries to beat you or curse you or tries to speak of offensively towards you that is known as auditory hallucination so instead of next time if you meet a pagal on the street instead of throwing stones at him or looking at him at a derogatory way think understand the pain of the patient he is not able to sleep at night because he is not able to sleep at night because this sound is so ego dystonic they criticize and always point out each and every action he does suppose he is eating bol khasna khabare bish mesha na hocche suppose he is trying to lie down bol subina loke toke marbe to khoti korbe to the person is too much plagued with all this sounds he is hearing which he is not able to understand the meaning why is this happening to him and the worst part he cannot live a normal life like you and me to so understand until unless you feel the pain of the patient you will never able to treat the patient and you will never able to give justice to the patient understand the feeling of the patient so this perception we need to know we need to understand and we need to know from the history from the examination of the patient and from the literature we should know which type of hallucination is the patient suffering from it at all he is suffering from you will find visual hallucination basically in patients of epilepsy or in alcoholics or alcoholics this auditory hallucination you will find in schizophrenics everyone all the patients all type of hallucination will find in schizophrenics but the most common hallucination you will find in schizophrenia is auditory hallucination schizophrenia skiz schizophrenia you should pronounce the name properly skiz schizophrenia so this is perception next in a patient first i will tell you about the difference between hallucinations and illusion what is the difference between hallucination and illusion and delusion 
this another term you will come delusion you will find in thought i will come to delusion what is hallucination hallucination is false perception false perception false perception and what is illusion you can write it as wrong perception delusion whereas is a disorder of thought i am not going into hallucination and delusion in detail in mental state examination because there were separate class for both of these because these are very these two are very important thing in a psychiatric patient psychiatric examination so what is hallucination is a false perception illusion is a wrong perception but delusion is a delusion is a disorder of thought so suppose you see a there is a rope on the road a patient in in a patient illusion he will perceive the rope as a snake whatever but in a hallucination patient there is no rope still the patient will see a snake illusion is most common please see in maybe side ghost bhut dekhe loke song shoshane jokhon you are you will know this shoshane their vultures cry the cry of a of a baby vulture imitates the sound of a small baby crying and in extreme in anxiety this illusion increases that's why jokhon our samsan jai our all the special senses are aroused because at the back of the mind we know we have read from the from childhood bhut ache the people the ghostly people people ghostly characters are there in the in the samsans and all these go but haunted places that leads to our brain developing illusions and hallucinations there is one of the other one of the topic of ghost and god which i will have another lecture on later on how we perceive ghost why we see ghost and why do we believe in in god psychiatry always says we are god fearing we are never god loving remember that nobody loves god we always fear god if you have any doubt come to me i will tell you why we fear god and why we don't love god nobody loves god after perception will come to attention and concentration we should know or we should jot down the how much attention or how much attention span the patient is having we have a series of questions which we ask we tell the patient to uh, to remember three objects which we speak at a duration of 1 second like a three words which are not related to each other like bat car and tree we speak those words with a duration of 1 second interval and tell the patient to repeat it and then we tell the patient that i will be speaking about this word i would ask you to recall these words after 3 to 5 minutes and you have to tell me good another consideration is we ask the patient to go from 100 minus 7 till five times if the patient is literate if the patient is not literate that much we can even ask 40 minus 3 or days of the week backwards backwards
If it will be that's not possible, then there will be big forwards. So, up till now, I have not finished the mental state exam. We will finish in next class. But I want to not increase your brain activity too much. I will just conclude. Appearance and behavior. While normally we write here, conscious, cooperating, communicative, is cooperative, psychomotor activity. Grooming, whether patient is cordial or not, or communication, I'm going to grooming. Well kept. Here we write in grooming. Well kept, kept, or ill kept, or ill kept. Then comes rapport establishment. Then mood. Then comes effect. Then comes thought. Then comes perception. Then comes attention and concentration. Later on, there's perceptual abnormalities. Then there's insight and judgment and other things in the meditation, which I will come, I will conclude in the next class. Till now, if you have any problem, please reach out to me. I hope you understand. It's very difficult to take in a Zoom class, but I hope you have understood a little bit about the mental state examination of a patient. Thank you.